Hello. Thanks for joining. My name is Jeff Demuth, and I'm an AWS solution architect. Been with AWS for about eight years, based out of Austin, Texas, and I'm on our geospatial specialty team. In this walkthrough, I'm going to show you how to deploy ArcGIS using the uh, AWS CloudFormation templates provided by Esri. One caveat is that this is meant for demonstration purposes, so don't just take this and deploy it into production. Definitely have your security team review anything you, you deploy in production. And with that, let's jump in. <clears throat> so to get started, I like to do everything through Cloud Shell. So we'll navigate through our Cloud Shell. And I've posted a little walkthrough on uh, Esri's hub, so hub.arcgis.com. I'll share the link in the comments as well. And we'll just start running these commands. So first we're going to create an S3 bucket to stage some, some data. Next we're going to create a SSH key. Create an elastic IP. We'll select our instance size. So um, this template only has an option for the M5XL. This is a bit of an old instance. We're actually on the M7s now. Uh, I think some of the, maybe they've updated this in a newer template, but would definitely deploy, um, recommend up updating this to M7 once it's deployed. And I can show you how to do that. It's very easy. You can essentially one click update your instance types. And that'll just look like a reboot to the system. We'll set a username and password. I just pause the video for a second to pull down the license file. But you'll copy a license file. I've just got the portal and server license file zipped up here. And we'll unzip those. And then I just remove the zip file. Next, uh, this is just an easy way to grab the names of those and add them as variables. So we've got the server license, the portal license, and then this will download the CloudFormation templates, and then we're going to sync that to S3. We'll set the subnets that we're going to use. Set our VPC. I just realized this is probably a little bit small. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Sorry about that. And again, all these commands are in this ArcGIS hub site, so I'll share that. We'll set a security group, and this will throw a couple errors because I've already opened these. Also, from a security standpoint, a lot of these aren't needed, really. It's just 443. Um, but I, I have them open just for troubleshooting and demonstration purposes. And see, it's just saying the rule already exists because I've run through this before. Next, we'll create an application load balancer and grab some of the variables from it, like its DNS name. That's what we're going to use for our certificate later. And there we go. We're ready to deploy our first CloudFormation template, which is going to be the server stack. And 
and we get back the ARN of the CloudFormation template. And then I've got a little command here to just check the status of that template. So we can see create and progress. We can drop this filter off and see. Uh, it's nice, it'll show you all the parameters that we passed to it. So you can see we didn't use a custom AMI. So Esri is just going to grab the, the base AMI and install on top of it. Uh, site admin for the username, our VPC, our web adapter name, we'll just call server. For the config store, we'll do file system. You also have the option to do S3. Um, just to keep things simple, I'm going to do file system. Also makes it nice for like a backup restore scenario. You can just back up the, the machine and that backs up the file system. So when you re do the restore, it's a little easier. Our key pair name, which we created, setting a 200 gig drive size. Here's our EIP, Elastic IP that we provisioned earlier. Our license file our bucket. There's no user password because it's not Windows. We're being uh, we're deploying on Linux. It's going to be Ubuntu. Our subnet. This is that ALB that we provisioned and the, the DNS name for the site domain. Our instance type is at M5. And then our site admin user password. So this will take about 15, 20 minutes to run. So I'll go ahead and pause the video. Um, when it's complete, we'll hop back on. All right, and we're back. You can say, see that the template is create complete. This actually went pretty quick. I think this one was done in maybe 10, 15 minutes. So next, we're going to create some target groups. I create a portal and a server target group, and then I temporarily put the server instance as part of the portal target group, just because I need an instance in there. Then we're going to create a self-signed SSL cert off of the DNS name of the ALB, and upload that to the AWS Certificate Manager, ACM. <clears throat> and I've had pretty good luck um, with this. I've also put a, like a public sign cert on the ACM, and it's nice with that. It'll auto-renew it, and then just leave the self-signed certs on the ArcGIS instance. That works pretty well. Not sure how long those self-signed cert certs are good for on the ArcGIS instance. So you probably have to write a little script to hit that generate API to renew them when they expire. But having that public cert on the ACM auto renewed is a really nice feature. We'll grab our server instance ID, which is required for the data store template. Well, here's where I register that instance with the target group. We're going to create an ALB listener. And a rule. <clears throat> So depending on what I'm doing, I've got a couple different types of ALB rules that I'll use. This one, since we've got web adapters, I just forward everything that's 443 um, with slash server to server and then portal to portal or just default everything to portal. Um, if I deploy without web adapters, which I typically recommend for customers, uh, I'll have a rule that says forward everything that's slash rest, slash admin, or slash manager to server, and then send everything else to portal.
We'll request another Elastic IP for data store. And we'll kick this one off. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again. This will probably take about 10, 15 minutes to run. And we'll hop back on when it's done. All right, and data store is complete now. I can actually walk through these parameters real quick too. So AMI and file system, um, site admin, VPC, key pair, drive size. So it asks for the ArcGIS server instance ID that we passed in. Our EIP, again, Platform is Linux with Ubuntu, subnet, instance type M5, and a password. <clears throat> All right, so to continue with our commands here, we're going to grab another IP for our portal. So we Allocate an EIP address, Elastic IP, and then this one jumps right into creating the portal instance. And this one I feel like usually takes the longest. I think Data Store took closer to 20 minutes. This one will probably also be 20, maybe 25. I'll go ahead and pause the video again, and we'll be back when this one finishes. All right, and we're back. We can now see create complete. We'll continue on. So now we're going to grab the instance ID of portal, paste that in. And so felt like that one took about 20 minutes to this, this time. Go ahead and register with the target group, portal target group. And so we had server as a kind of a placeholder instance, so we'll unregister server. I'm just going to set up a service URL. So I just take the ALB DNS name and append server, same for portal. And now we're ready for the federation script and the federation script. Whoop. This one's pretty quick. This will probably take 10 minutes to run. And that's going to federate all of our instances. And now we can see create and progress for the federation template. All right, and we're back. Yeah, that was quick. It's probably about 10 minutes. So we can see check status, create complete. And then I've got just a simple command here to give us our URL to log in. And self-signed cert, so that's why we get this pop-up. If we had a public cert, it would go right into it. We'll go ahead and log in. And there we go. We've got 
some of the pre-built content in here. And show that on a map. Also got my EC2 dashboard, so you can see I've got three instances running. So data store server portal. I mentioned upgrading these to M5 uh, from the M5 XL to like an M6 or an M7. So to do that, you just go to instance settings. change instance type. <clears throat> now I have to turn off the instance to do that, but you go to change instance type and you set the, um, you know, you change it to an M6XL or M7. Um, same thing on the storage. You want to upgrade the storage from a GP2 to a GP3. And so click on that. And you can modify it. Here, let me try the map image. And real quick back to these instances. So there's a couple different deployment options. You've got the all-in-one template. And you've got the, kind of breaking it out separately like this. With everything broken out separately, you're going to get better performance. Uh, you don't have all the services on a single machine fighting over resources. Uh, if you can... The, the all-in-one where server portal data store is on a single instance, like that's going to be fine if you've got a, a handful of, of analysts working on the environment, but you're going to quickly outgrow it and you're going to want to deploy everything as, you know, three separate servers. Also, you're purchasing that RGI server license. So when you deploy data store and portal on the server instance, they're making use of those, those cores where really you want that server license to be dedicated to the server. So server is the only one using those cores. You now, if you buy a four core license, um, you can actually typically deploy eight cores on AWS with a four core license. Esri's got uh, a website that talks about, you know, cloud core licensing versus on-prem licensing. <clears throat> you can also use the CloudFormation templates to, to do upgrades of the environment. I might do a video later to show, um, you know, using CloudFormation to upgrade. Oh, and then let's hop back over to our map here. You can see this is just a sample major cities built in feature. And uh, that's all I have for this video. Um, hope you like it. Um, feel free to you know, like the video, subscribe. Also comment if you've got any questions or you'd like to see anything specific uh, for the next video. Thanks for joining.